like get back to where we're going if you're going to Aiden Drill in the end. I want no part of this, is what he was saying. He's like, fuck this. <laughs> I'm out. Save your money. Good sir, and good night. But Zed, much like, I mean, you need to do when you're haggling, Zed tries the chicken technique, asking Hearn to point out the driver in the room better than him, which is kind of a bold move, because either they're going to get offended and be like, ha, fuck you, and then no information, or they actually point somebody out, and that means that they're not a very good business person. <laughs> no. <laughs> Are you a bitch? Okay. Okay. Let's go. <laughs> but a Hearn makes the right choice for his business. And he's like, hey, none of them are going to get you there any better than I can. He's not saying he's the best, but he's the best in the room. Yes. Zed hearing this is like, okay, he's playing the business card, which is fine. He's a business owner. And he's like, I know what you're doing. You're just trying to boost your price. I'm calling bullshit. And I'm also playing the rich person really, really well. I feel like Zed, being a wizard, coming from, like, at least from his education on, and then being the first wizard, he is used to rich people. He's used to big palaces and shit like that. Granted, he's been living alone by himself for a long time, but, like, he's used to this dealing with royalty because of his position as a wizard, and so he knows what assholes these people can be. Yeah, he knows how the game is played, and the game isn't to just tell this guy, I'll pay you whatever the fuck you want. He has to, like, engage in this, even though he knows he's going to give him whatever he needs in the end, because otherwise this guy would get suspicious and be like, that's weird. Why are you just throwing your money away? Well, you got a dicker. <laughs> also, you know what? I... <laughs> you gotta. Like, it's part of the... Fuck, I don't know. It's just something we do. The back and forth. <laughs> I don't want to pay that. Well, it's also, like, it happens later in the chapter, too. He's just, like, bossy. Like, there's no apologetic or um, grateful tone to him. He's just like, hey, you know what? Also grab my horse, bitch. Like, yeah. <laughs> all <laughs> okay. that extra shit at the end. Like, I didn't actually sign up for all of this. I paid... I. I was paid to drive you somewhere. So how about you gather your own shit? I will meet you out front when I'm ready to leave. And from there on, I work for you. But I mean, Ahern is setting up to really earn his money. Now, oh, yeah. <laughs> which is not a bad thing, necessarily. So Ahern, also being of the dickering variety, lists out all of the reasons that he is, in fact, inflating his price. He's like, yeah, I charged the most, but I got reasons for it. Especially for where you're going. Right. <laughs> These reasons include there's a civil war in Nicobarisi for one. There's unrest between Galea and Kelton for two. Apparently, the Keltons, though, think it's Galeans attacking the border towns. We know that that's actually the reverse. Kelton is decimating Galea, mm -hmm. right? And it's bad, but Zed... He believes none of it. He's like, no, they wouldn't allow that to happen. That's silly. It's just not the way things are done. That would have been handled for sure. Right. We also actually figured out where on the map we are at this point. We are in Kelton, close to the Galea border. Right. So I thought that was interesting because I was definitely way the fuck off <laughs> in the last chapter when I was like, oh, maybe they're on the other side of Galea over by Jara or whatever. No. No, they're in Kelton. They're yeah. in the shit town. We were literally just trying to figure it out, and it's like one more chapter. Oh. Oh. Okay. Yeah, we had just gotten <laughs> to the point of wondering. <laughs> but they were damn close to Aiden Drill. Like, they were, yeah. Straight shot, no mountains in front of them. Would have taken them like a day. Now they're getting way back behind. <laughs> so, way to go. Good job. So, Zed finally cuts to the chase. He's like, I know you're going to ask me top price. Just tell me the reason why I should pay it. Because I get all of these reasons are going on, but, like, why are you the man for the job? Yeah, shitty situation. Tell me why you can do it. I like the way he puts this because of the way he puts it directly to a Hearn. Look, if I go talk to these other guys, they're going to tell me all the same shit that you're telling me about you. So prove it. Actually, like, put your money where your mouth is. Why are you the best? Don't bullshit me. 
be honest. I'm drinking tea. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> according to the theme of this yeah. chapter, you're supposed to go with the guy drinking tea. <laughs> Personally, I disagree. I do enjoy my alcoholic beverages, but while working, I am stone cold sober, and I work just as hard as any one of the horses that Ahern has. So, I'll get off my soapbox now. <clears throat> On with the chapter. <laughs> Wait, is there an option to give the horses booze? What's going? I'm confused. Are they allowed to drink? I they mean, be allowed to drink after they're done with their shift. Sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ahern tells Zed that he did a good deed during the Daharan War. He brought Galeans, the Celtic steel that he... You're laughing at me. I'm still laughing about the horses being drunk. <laughs> <laughs> like a wolf comes up, ah, it's a fucking wolf, who cares? Fuck your wolf. <laughs> He <laughs> just not shit scares him. That's why Richard and Verna's horses weren't running anywhere. They were drunk as hell. They're like, I don't even care. Or maybe they got high and they just wanted to eat all the grass. That's they're, all it was. I don't give a shit if this is sand or grass. Whatever, man. I'm just putting in my hours <laughs> and I can't wait for retirement and that'll be that. <laughs> These assholes. I'm sorry I interrupted you. <laughs> Continue, please. So, Ahern tells Zed that he did a good deed during the Daharan War. He brought Galean forces, their fucking salt, and their Celtish weapons that they needed. And because he did so, Queen Cirilla was like, yo, dude, here's a pass. You can come here whenever you want to, motherfucker. And uh, now he is the only person who has that. So, pay me. <laughs> I don't know why this reminds me of Elvis when he got that badge from the president to, like, he was basically a, a, a law unto himself for a little while. And so this guy's like, I got a fucking badge, so I can totally go through there. These motherfuckers, they can't do that. Maybe because we watched the episode of Drug History with that, and it was probably a little similar to the way I just punched that out. <laughs> it was pretty intense. <laughs> I got it out, though. Yes, you did. <laughs> So Zed tells Ahern to name his price. Fine. You have convinced me. Your little medallion's pretty cool. <laughs> it's kind of <laughs> like you were knighted in a way. So I get it. I get it. So when he does, he adds on an extra stop because I'm going to get my money's worth. And he's only willing to pay full price for passage to both places. This was not previously discussed. And a fantastic tactic when dickering. And the price is... 20 gold now, 10 when we get to Aidendrill. Which, again, is another dick move, though. Like, the guy's like, give me give me 30. I'll, I'll take you to the place for 30. You just told me to name my fucking price. And Zed's like, you know what? Fuck you naming your price. I'll pay you 20. I'll give you another 10 if you bring me to the place I want. Like, fuck you. <laughs> That's not naming my price. That's you naming my price. It's dickering, like you said. I'm just saying. If someone says name your price and then dickers you... I would be mad. Oh, well, yeah, but I mean, you have to, like, it's in a fight. You have to defend yourself. You have to be, like, trying to get the best possible price. Totally get and it. he is adding stops, but technically the stop is on the way, so he doesn't have to, like, go. Uh, yes, he does. It's on the way, but it's on the way back. <laughs> <laughs> well yeah that's true <laughs> i'm just saying i totally respect it like as a um i respect it if i was in zed's position i would do the same thing but in a hern's position i'd be like fuck you bud <laughs> it's gonna take a whole lot more tea to make up for this yeah i'm gonna <laughs> need some booze in my tea now thank you julie Ahern has only one condition for bringing Zed and Addy to where they need to go. He can't wear his stupid hat. <laughs> and he gives the reason that it's going to spook the horses. And I get that. But my thought was, how about not be a flashy rich guy while we're traveling through potentially hostile places? Mm -hmm. People are going to see you and be like, oh, that's a rich guy. We can totally rob him. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that motherfucker being flamboyant. We yeah. can take his shit. <laughs> like, I'm surprised Zed is as dressed up as he is. They are trying to hide in the fact that they're rich. I was going to say royalty, but that's not true. 
they're trying to hide in the fact that they're rich people, but it does no good to draw way more attention to yourself than is necessary either. Like <laughs> upper middle class would have probably been fine. Been safe, yeah. Yeah. You pull up in a decent looking car, nothing too fancy. It's not a stretch Lamborghini by any means. <laughs> But then you get in, you get out, you're unnoticed. Yeah. There's not as many expectations. Yeah. Like like with Hillman or whatever the fuck his name was. He assumes you had to call him by a certain thing. If you were a little bit lower class, people wouldn't call you by that. Yeah, then you would be more a little bit more blue collar. Be like, no, that's fucking Ruben. Get out of here with that Mr. Ribnick shit. I'm not Mr. Bruni. That bothers the <laughs> hell out of me when people call me that. And it's like, no, that's that's my dad. But you know what? My dad would say the same thing. So, yeah. <laughs> But Zed really doesn't hate the idea of not wearing the hat anyways. So he's like, fine, I have my own condition then. You get to tell my wife that that is your condition. <laughs> well, which and I I'm good was, with it. I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's like, fine, you tell her. She's mean. But. <laughs> But I also felt like I, at this point, would also be like, cool, doesn't even matter. I saw all the other motherfuckers in here. I'm going to go up there and be like, Addy, no. <laughs> well, are we going to forget the fact that Addy is going to be able to tell? Oh, yeah. Like, okay, you have to tell her that it's your condition. And he's going to be like, fine, I'll tell her that. And it is. But Zed is also very happy about that. She's going to know. It's probably not the most important thing, but, like, she's going to call you out on it because she's Addy. Yeah. But, she, I mean, she already knew because he was already like, I look foolish. You know? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, apparently, earlier, Zed was thinking ahead when he was exchanging all that fucking money because he has those bags of silver, right? In his pocket? Mm-hmm. One of them contains 20 pieces of silver, apparently. That's what it, it's supposed to have, 20 pieces of silver. He reaches in, he converts it to gold, and then he hands Ahern the bag. He's like, cool. All done. Got that done. Ahern then dumps the money out, tries to count it. So one is missing and one is wooden. There's only 18 there. Zed checks the other bag. It too has two wooden coins and two missing. He ends up paying the man and telling him he wants to leave now. But he is super fucking concerned about the fact that his money got wonky in his pocket. Because it was only supposed to go to gold, apparently. Right. That and there's missing pieces, which worries him even more. The wood he's not concerned with. It sounds like something that can happen. So he's like, okay, that's the magic got funky, whatever. It's the missing stuff that bothers him way, way more. Yeah, because they just disappeared from existence. Yeah, if the magic had gone wrong... I mean, okay, it turned it into the wrong thing. You accidentally turned a Coke into a Pepsi. Big fucking deal. But when you turn your Coke into nothing, well, that's a problem. Yes. <laughs> Especially when you only have additive magic. You can add, you can't take away. The missing is definitely taking away. <laughs> yeah. So he tells him that he wants to leave, like, now-ish, if that's cool. And Ahern's like, look, I just got back. I'm going to get the horses ready, but then I am definitely going to get a few hours sleep before we leave. Because, I mean, I have to. I just got here. So, so, yeah, we're just now having this conversation. I know you're ready to go, but, like, I bought a hotel room, and apparently so did you. So. Let's now, sleep? Zed is playing rich enough to where it may not matter. But for Ahern, he's like, no, I paid for this shit. I'm sleeping in a bed tonight. Yeah. <laughs> that is going to happen. And Zed's thinking, hopefully something comes up and we won't actually have to go all the way there because it would be super nice if they had their magic problem fixed. <laughs> if Addy was just suddenly like, hey, you know what I forgot? In the next town over, like here in Kelton, I actually have an old friend and she totally can fix all our problems. Yeah, it's got a magic fix all potion. It's totally fine. Yeah. Not even an issue. I don't think Hearn would be quick to give the money back, though. He'd be like, no, we shook on it. I agreed to take you that far, but, like, I didn't end up having to. That's on you, not me. 100%. So. <laughs> so he's hoping that something's going to come up to where they don't have to go that far. 
but he knows that Addie was talking about how Delight only knows where these women learned about the Skrin, and he just can't get it out of his brain, as 